Greetings, Frogman here. Ready for another tutorial. This one we're going to talk about compositing, cutting things out from one image and putting them in another, blending them. A lot of opinions on how to do this, the best way to do this, which tools to use this, use to do this. Um, I'm going to show you what I feel works best for me. Um, others may disagree, but uh, I think I have pretty clean cutouts. So, all right. Here we go. First, we're going to start with something supposedly easy. Something you would think, oh, I'll just use the magic wand on that. Um, this giraffe is on a white background. You figure you just click and, uh, you know, select, delete the white stuff, and the giraffe will be all by itself. Not always that easy. Magic wand is always iffy. Um, works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. It's always good to try it and see, and if it doesn't, you move on to a different technique. The way I like to set up files that uh, I'm cutting something out on is first um, go ahead and make this background layer just a regular layer. Huh? Um, and then we want to create two more layers underneath it. And the easy way to do that is hold down the control key and hit new layer, uh, the new layer button and uh, those will create the layers underneath instead of above and uh, we're going to fill one of those layers with black one of them with 50 percent gray which is this last gray and your swatches here um, and you can also do that through edit fill and then choose 50 percent gray here um, either way it works um, and uh, show you why we do that in a second. Now a lot of times when you get images from the internet they're going to be JPEGs and if you zoom in real close you're going to see that they have JPEG artifacts and this can mess with your magic wand so basically we want to set up the image to make sure that the magic wand has the best chance possible of working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this giraffe layer um, that's Control J, or you can right click and hit Duplicate Layer. And we're going to go into Image, Adjustments, Levels. We're going to bring the black way up. So it's got a really, really defined edge that the magic wand can pick up, pick up on. And as you can see, the JPEG artifacts are coming in a little clear. To get rid of those, you just ever so slightly move the white slider down until they disappear. Alright, so got all those gone. Go ahead and hit OK. Let's zoom back out and go ahead and hit your magic wand tool. Now one thing you may want to mess with is the tolerance. Usually 25 to 35 works fine, but um, you know sometimes you have to play with that. You have to increase it, decrease it, um, just depends on the image. Uh, all right, so we can go ahead and delete this contrasty layer now. We uh, we're all done with that. We're back to our normal giraffe layer, and uh, just go ahead and hit delete. And uh, now we'll see why we made all those layers before. On white looks just fine. On gray looks great. On black. Hmm, the tail's a little messed up. So, that means if we were putting this giraffe in a dark image, the tail would need to be cleaned up. Um, but if it's, you know, moderate tones or a real light image, should be fine. And I found a nice savanna picture that uh, we can put them in. And... Uh, it looks just fine, the tail looks fine. So since it wasn't a real dark picture, it works okay. And uh, just move him into place there. He looks like he's part of the, the picture there. So that's the magic wand. That's the first thing you usually try. Now sometimes the magic wand isn't going to work. Um, you, you give it a try and it just isn't cutting it. We got this little zombie guy here, and uh, if you look, he's got a little shadow down here. So first of all, 
the uh, magic wand isn't going to pick that up. Um, the other thing is I tried cutting them out earlier and the magic wand just could not get rid of all the white edges and things like that and he just ended up looking edgy and not right. So that means we're going to have to do it the hard way. And the way I do it, if you've got something that's uh, got good focus, good detail, nice uh, clean edges like this, um, I like the polygon lasso tool. It's up here, it's the second one in the lasso option, lasso tool options. And uh, basically what I do is I just zoom in to 800%. That seems to be the magic number for this kind of a thing. And you just start like an X-Acto knife. Just start uh, cutting them out. And you want to cheat in just a little bit. Uh, just so you don't have any uh, white edges. And uh, you just follow follow along and cut them out um, like you would. Um, of course this takes a little bit of uh, practice and getting used to, but with the magic wand tool you can actually make pretty decent curves if you, you know, do incremental steps. So don't be worried about it not doing curves well. It actually does curves very well. Um, some may use the pen tool, but uh, I find that's a little complicated for beginners to learn how to use. And personally, I don't like like it for this either. I think the polygon lasso tool is just easier. So basically, you just follow him around, cut him out, and uh, I I had prepared this earlier. Uh, and once you get them all cut out, you'll uh, have the selection that looks like this. And then you just right click on him and choose new layer via um, copy or cut, it doesn't really matter. And then just delete the layer underneath him. And uh, now we do our little check. Looks good on white, looks good on gray, looks good on black. So he's all ready to go in pretty much any picture you want. Um, I uh, found this uh, cool graveyard picture that we're going to put them in. Um, so what you do is just take your move tool, uh, make sure his layer is selected, and just drag him over. As you look, he already looks very clean, cut out and everything. We just got to position him right. And uh, you'll notice he doesn't quite fit in the picture. He looks like he's standing on top of the grass, but we can fix that. Let's create a new layer, get our brush tool, um, and you should have this as one of your standard brushes. It's a little three-pronged little grass looking thing. And the cool thing about this brush is it uses both the foreground and the background colors. Um, so that means if we look at the grass, it's black, on one edge and that green color on the other. So we need to pick up that green with our eyedropper. Um, you can just hold down Alt if you have a brush selected or the eyedropper is up here. And then uh, we went, uh, we're going to want black for, uh, for the background. So pick up that green so we got green and black as our colors. Now we do need to do make a slight modification to the brush. You can do that by going to Windows Brushes, or I have my brush um, engine as a little button in my, and we just need to go to Color Dynamics, and just turn this hue jitter all the way down. We don't want any in-between colors. We just want the green and the black. And uh, in a layer above them, just start uh, painting in painting in some grass right at his feet there. All right, so now we've kind of gone over this little plant in the foreground. That's okay. Um, now we're going to take polygon lasso tool or lasso tools fine too. And we're just going to just put a circle 
right around his feet. Probably should have turned this off. Yeah, let's try that again. Just put a circle going around his feet, making sure it stays out of the foreground elements. And close the loop. Let's turn the grass back on. And we're just going to create a quick layer mask. And the way you do that is in your layers palette here. It's, uh, this one here is a little square with a circle in it. And there you go. He looks like he's in grass. Now, this grass is a little blurry than that glass, grass, so that's a quick fix too. Get a filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. And uh, I have it already set like 93 and radius of 1, 1 1.1, something like that. And you click that and uh, it matches the sharpness of all the other grass. And now he looks like he's standing in the grass. So that is that guy.